going to just kind of talk a little bit today with the assistance of our PowerPoint about some of the things that um, have happened in Ohio over the last several years. And uh, I want you to feel that you can ask a question at any point you want to ask a question. If I talk about something that doesn't make sense or isn't clear to me, just raise your hand and, and let me know that, and I'll, I'll try to clarify uh, at, at the time. It's hard to hold your questions, I think, to the end. If you're like me, I kind of forget them, or they're not nearly as interesting to me at the end as they would be at, at, if I had the opportunity to ask them when, when the question was in my mind. So, um, as I say, this is what I hope I can accomplish. I'm going to talk about some of the people that have been involved, some of the events that people have um, impacted in some way or another, and, um, and then some of the opportunities and obstacles that counseling has faced as it's tried to become an important profession in Ohio. And I'll, I'll probably also do more, a little deal, with what I think is unique about what Ohio has done nationally. Because I think that gets overlooked sometimes. Mm -hmm. We've made some contributions mm -hmm. to the national scene, particularly in the area of clinical counseling, that uh, were going against the tide. And, uh, and I think have really changed the face of counseling uh, across the country. And I'll be more specific about that as, as, as we go on. Um, I'm not going to talk about rehabilitation counseling. Um, that's not something I know a great deal about uh, in terms of the history. I will talk a little bit about rehabilitation counseling around licensure and how we were able to avoid uh, some of the conflicts that occurred in some states uh, because we, we approached working with rehabilitation counselors differently in a, in a more collaborative way. I will talk a little bit about that. And I won't talk at all about drug and alcohol counseling because that's another area that has its kind of its own separate history in this state. And, uh, and I don't know enough about that separate history to give it uh, the attention it deserves. So I won't be addressing that either. Um, now, with that, I want to tell you why I think history is important. I think that as you try to go through any program, master's or doctorate, that you need to begin to think about what your professional identity is. And it's easy to do that when you're sitting in a class with other people that are, are preparing to be what you're preparing to be. It's more <coughs> difficult to maintain and encourage and promote your own professional identity when you get out in the field and you're surrounded by social workers and psychologists and, and everybody that kind of wants to make you a second class citizen mm -hmm. rather than a first class citizen. So I think if, if you know your history, I think you can have a stronger professional identity because of that. Also, I think you should be proud. Um, I think most counselors, and I think particularly in Ohio, we've come a long way. And I think we should be proud of, of what we've accomplished. And I think knowing your history helps you uh, be proud. Um, also, to recognize the contributions of the leaders in your state. And, and to think about, you know, can you become one of those leaders as part of your future to be a leader for the profession of counseling in Ohio or in another state or in the nation? And also to generate ideas about the future. We were talking prior to coming in here about the need to really kind of figure out where counseling is going in the future. Because we've had, we've gotten a lot out of licensure, but now we've got a future that's filled with change and challenges. And what are we going to do? How are we going to continue to promote our profession? And so hopefully knowing something about your history will help you think about ways of, of getting, generating new ideas for the future. When I say we've come a long way, look at, look at this, when you really think about it, 50 years of school counseling. I do want to say I am going to say some things about school counseling, and I, I typically, and I know you're all clinical counseling folks, but there's, you can't really understand our history if you don't understand something about where school counseling has come from, because that's really where we all came from. And uh, it's facing a lot of challenges today, may not even survive, as we know it. 
by 50 years of school counseling certification. And now, you know, in the early 2000s, the state of Ohio changed all of what they do in education to licensure. So they no longer call it certification, they call it licensure. It's not licensure like our licensure, licensure is, but it is called that. Almost 26 years of counseling licensure. To think about almost 26 years of counseling licensure. And to appreciate that in a way, you kind of have to go back 26 years ago and, and think about what it was like. And I'm sure for many people in here, that's not even possible. Uh, but because uh, but, uh, I look at so many young faces, and I think it's not possible. But the, if I had picked up a Sunday paper 27 years ago, I would have seen all kinds of ads for social workers and psychologists. I would have not seen any ad for licensed counseling. And in fact, sometimes in some of the sections of the newspaper, if I saw ads and had a counselor alongside it, it was really talking about uh, one of the women of the night. It was not talking, it was talking about prostitutes. It was not talking about who we think of. As so it's a, it was a far different time. And one of the problems we had, and I think we still have, is counseling, the term, is so generic sometimes that it's very difficult to imagine getting a handle or control of a term that, that, that is that generic. But all you have to do is to have lived through that time when counselors were really nothing almost non-existent. The only kind of counselors that there really were were school counselors. And so when you think, when you think, and I can, fortunately or unfortunately, I can go back that many years, and I, because I was living it at that time, I had done my training, and I was living trying to figure out, you know, well, you know why I did this thing, counseling. You know, it's so, it, you have to work so hard to get ahead in this profession. So we'll, get, we'll end up talking more about that. 51 years of the Ohio School Counseling Association. 51 years. 40 plus years of the Ohio Counseling Association. So we've been around now longer. We're the new kid on the block when you compare us to psychology and social work. But we still um, have been around now quite a while. And it's time. In fact, I, I was saying today, I think it's past time for us to begin to really examine where we go from here and what the future of counseling will be in, in for you, <coughs> for you. And you will want to have some sort of conversation, be a part of some sort of conversation about that, I would think, too. Just to give you some quick ideas, um, this was the Ohio, per we were the and I say we, meaning people in, that are now in the Ohio Counseling Association, we were in the Ohio Personnel and Guidance Association back in 67. So we were OPGA. In 84, we became OACD. And now we're the Ohio Counseling Association. Of course, that's American Counseling Association, the American Association of Counseling Development the American Personnel and Guidance Association. But what other organization do you know that's changed its name three times in that period of time? And I think that's part of our problem. Not that we changed our name, but we're not totally sure who we are. We're not totally sure what we represent. Human development has always been a major part of what we say we do. Wellness, those kinds of areas. So, you know, what are what do we do? Do we do clinical counseling, or we do, do we do wellness, or do we do both? What do we really want our title, our name, our associations to represent us as? So, also, you know, I said if you had any questions that you should feel free to ask questions. You should also feel free to make comments. So if you have a comment that you want to make, don't hesitate. You don't even have to raise your hand, just make a comment. Um, I'm going to talk for just a little bit about school counseling. And you, the other thing that you have to understand about counseling 
So if you go back again, let's say 25, 30 years, let's say 30 years, go back again 30 years, most everybody that was a counselor educator had been a school counselor. That's where they came from. And if you go around the state now and you look at the counselor educators in one institution after another, there's usually an old codger like me that's still around that started out in a school. So that was where everybody kind of started, and that was what they understood. Now they knew they were going different places, but their work experience and their, their first job was probably in some situation that was, that was school counseling. Some important things have happened, and I'll refer to some dates in here, because you have to, you kind of have to think about this, or at least I have been thinking about it chronologically. And it, it helped you understand what's happened to us, I think. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik. And that was a really important historical event, as well as an, an important event in our history. Did, was, it, was there anybody in here that was alive when that happened? OK, a couple, couple people. Those of you, good. What, do you remember what that, do you remember some of the, how would you describe the, um, how we responded as a nation to that. Or maybe, and, and if you were too young to remember that, that's fine. But I mean. Well, I was uh, just beginning elementary school. I won't say what grade, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember there was a, a, a real sort of a, a sense of kind of a fear and a challenge to, uh, oh my gosh, the, the communists are getting ahead of us in what's going to happen. Nicely put. Nicely put. That's exactly what happened. There was fear. There was a feeling that we had lost the race in space. There was a feeling that there was something terribly wrong with this country. What, what are we going to do? How are we going to change that education system that has totally failed us? And out of that then came a renewed interest in what was happening to students in schools. They aren't getting enough math and science. They aren't getting enough career counseling. There's not enough kids going to college. Some of that sounds real familiar to mm -hmm. But that was, it was at a level that I really don't remember it being worse than it was at that time. I was in college at the time. I remember being very fearful of what this really meant. To us. So out of that came the National Defense Education Act. The National Defense Education Act was a federal piece of federal legislation that provided money for school districts to hire school counselors and for institutions to train in new school counselors. So the emphasis here was all, again, on school counseling. In 57, there, were, there was some school counseling going on in Ohio. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, somebody that had been a teacher might take a couple classes, and then all of a sudden they were uh, you know, counseling in the school, or maybe an administrator. 